Okay, we're now going to look at using the short circuit time constant to find the low frequency response of an amplifier. So you may remember that uh, the amplifier that we looked at the other day for open circuit time constant, we found the high frequency response, and we know that uh, we estimated it to be a one pole uh, response for the amplifier. And what we found was the omega h, which was the pole frequency. And this is really a shaping, a high frequency shaping factor known as uh, FH of S, and this is found using that OCTC method. Today we're going to find the low frequency pole, which is our FL of S, our low frequency shaping factor, and this is going to be found with this SCTC method. Now what we assume uh, in our uh, method is that we have a one pole, one zero response uh, given by the following expression, S divided by S plus omega L. So we have a zero at DC uh, that causes this increase in uh, the output amplitude until we reach the pole where the amplitude flattens out. Now we're going to assume a dominant pole uh, again and so our omega L uh, frequency is equal to the sum over all pole frequencies omega P I. In other words, this is equal to the sum over I of 1 over the time constants, which are given by the product of CI times RI. Now what are CI and RI? CI are the large capacitors in the circuit. These are typically extrinsic capacitors that we add for things like decoupling and bypassing. They're going to have values in the nanofarad to microfarad range. RIs are the driving resistances seen by each of those individual CI capacitors. So in our open circuit time constant analysis, what we're going to do is we're going to short all large capacitors that aren't being analyzed. We're going to replace the C being analyzed, in other words CI, by a test voltage source. We're going to measure the current that flows from that test voltage source to figure out what RI is. Now in the meantime we need to remove all independent sources. This means that our voltage sources become short circuits and our current sources become open circuits. And finally, all small capacitors are open circuited. And this makes sense because at low frequencies their impedances will be very high. Now we're going to find multiple time constants for every big capacitor in the circuit and uh, this is going to be a little bit different than OCTC. Our omega L is going to be equal to 1 over the time constant for each of the big capacitors in the circuit. The sum of 1 over the time constant for each of those big capacitors. Okay, so in the next uh, set of uh, lecture notes we will look at an example. Okay, we're going to do an example calculation for short circuit time constant uh, now, and we're going to look at this common emitter amplifier where our input is going in the base and the output's on the collector. Now we break this down by solving for each of the individual capacitors in the circuit uh, by themselves, and so we'll start with CB. So the equivalent circuit for CB is drawn as follows. We're going to short all of our independent voltage sources. We're going to replace CB with a test voltage source, PX.
And when we're done, we have the following circuit left over. Okay, now don't forget that we have to include the resistance looking into the base of the transistor, and this is R pi of the transistor. So if we look at the total resistance that is seen by this voltage source, it would be Ri plus R pi in parallel with R1 and R2. So this is equal to R C B. We can draw a similar equivalent circuit for the analysis of C C, the collector capacitance. Now if we look at the voltage over current ratio here to find uh, this resistance, we only see RC because the output resistance of the transistor is uh, infinite due to the early voltage being infinite. Of course we can write this out just in case the, early, the uh, output resistance wasn't infinite, uh, but uh, in this case R out is equal to infinity. Okay, so this would be equal to RCC. Now the last capacitor we have to worry about is the emitter capacitance. So I'll redraw the circuit for the emitter capacitance analysis. Okay, now we know that the resistance looking into the emitter of a transistor is approximately equal to 1 over Gm. So if we were to find Vx over Ix here, this would equal Re in parallel with 1 over Gm. Hence that is Rce. Now to find the total time constant, we want to find tau CB, tau CC, and tau CE. Tau CB would just be equal to CB times the quantity Ri plus R pi in parallel with R1 in parallel with R2. Tau CC is equal to RC in parallel with RO times CC, and tau CE is equal to CE times RE in parallel with 1 over GM. Now to find the low frequency response we need to sum these, or sum the inverse of these, so omega L is simply equal to 1 over tau CB plus 1 over tau CC plus 1 over tau CE. And that's an example of using short circuit time constant to find the low frequency response of an amplifier.